Greetings. Um, today I wanted to talk about uh, something a bit different. <clears throat> yeah, primarily uh, documentaries I like. Um, now most of these will be movie related. Like the making of uh, <clears throat> certain films. But there are some that aren't that. But uh, I just wanted to highlight some documentaries I like and um <clears throat> the first one is um is in this uh big box here the Dark Knight Trilogy Ultimate Collector's Edition yeah it was limited in a certain amount of number how many uh how many uh, mine is uh, 11,757 of, uh, out of 141,500, uh, <clears throat> uh, versions of this, um, and inside has, uh, five, uh, frimable villain prints, um, <clears throat> reproduction of the Tumblr, Batpod, and the Bat, the vehicles Batman uses in these films. <clears throat> a large 48-page uh, uh, photo book of the trilogy, a letter from Christopher Nolan, as well as all three films, uh, <clears throat> and three bonus discs, two of which are packaged with The Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises in general, as well as a... Uh, <clears throat> Four, uh, six disc which has these special features um, which is uh, the fire rises the creation and impact of the Dark Knight trilogy which is the first documentary I want to talk about because it's a fantastic look at the entire trilogy as a whole I mean all three of these have great documentaries, featurettes, whatever <clears throat> you want to call them but the documentary is uh, has great uh, interviews from Christopher Nolan, Emma Thomas, uh, David Goyer, Jonathan Nolan. <clears throat> um, as well as uh, other people involved with the films, as well as you get to see some rare footage like... Uh, the uh, test screenings, uh, or testing, yeah, the tests of uh, Christian Bale as Bruce Wayne and Batman. They used the Vel Kilmer uh, Batman Forever suit. Um, they also show uh, Killian Murphy uh, tried out to be Bruce Wayne and Batman, but wasn't working out. But he got cast as a Scarecrow. <clears throat> And um, Amy Adams actually uh, off camera and even in seeing the back of her head, perhaps sometimes you know you get to hear her as a see her as a Rachel. Uh, you know she came in as a favor, <clears throat> and um, yeah, and you also get to hear from Zack Snyder, Guillermo del Toro, Michael Mann, and many others about how influential and impactful this film was or these films were not just two superhero and comic book films as a whole but even in general like you know the bond films with daniel craig uh they specifically went the direction they did because of batman begins <clears throat> which uh you know batman begins came out in 2005 casino royale in 2006 so in a year they made a James Bond film that was fairly inspired in terms of the tone and more realistic approach because of Batman Begins. And one of the things that I found interesting and fascinating was learning how the pitch that Christopher Nolan had for the, uh, the first film, The Batman Begins, Lasted like like the meeting was like 
10, 15 minutes. And then afterwards, they decided to go with what he, with his idea. Um, and Charles Roven is also, who will produce the films with Nolan and his wife, <clears throat> was also interviewed, of course. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, it's an excellent documentary. Uh, I'm not going to show the inside. Uh, oh, there you go. This is what it looks like. It's this big thing here with all the discs there and some of the stuff. I don't have uh, these little mini reproductions of the vehicles because in here because well, they're over there off camera. So there you go. But they do have another version of this. Uh, set without all of, all of this the only thing I believe that is included also is, is um, the letter from Christopher Nolan about how you know how he's like he's very lucky to have been able to make these three films and fortunate and also uh, basically a gratitude to everybody who bought this and enjoyed it and the other version with all that stuff is essentially in the, something like this to have six discs. Um, obviously, this is a five movie set, so you know, you have to have another thing there. Yeah. Or I guess perhaps they would just. Uh, have it be there or so, but yeah. Using this die hard uh, thing as a example. Of the size and all of what this would be. Uh, on a size that you could put on a shelf easily. So obviously something like this has to be on top of something or... So because it's not going to fit normally on your shelf, unless you have a shelf dedicated to stuff like this, then all right, by all means, then put, use that there. Um, but another uh, documentary I really love it comes with Jaws. Now, ever since the Blu-ray, <clears throat> uh, there is the... Uh, the shark is still working the impact and leg legacy of Jaws, where they do touch about the making of the film. Um, but the making of Jaws, which originally appeared on the Laserdisc version, uh, like in the 90s, I think for the, uh, the 20th anniversary. Um, and that was great, seeing the process of how they made the film, <clears throat> all the ideas, and uh, going about getting the live-action footage of the... Uh, shark for various scenes and um, yeah it, it's just it's just great um, and uh, I got the 25th anniversary VHS and then DVD um, uh, and the VHS was uh, <clears throat> two tapes and uh they uh, basically uh, had a condensed version of the documentary, and they also had uh, the outtakes and the deleted scenes um, on the tape also afterwards. Um, uh, but ever since the Blu-ray, or the 30th anniversary DVD, two-disc DVD edition, and then onward <clears throat> they've had the making of jaws completely uncut <clears throat> in its original form from uh the laser disc you know and the film is two hours and four minutes and the film is or the documentary is like one minute more but you know they have steven spielberg talking uh peter benchley carl gottlieb uh the producers richard zanuck and david brown and uh, stars Roy Scheider and uh, Richard Dreyfus and Maureen Gary, as well as 
the the Taylors, <clears throat> uh, Ron and Valerie Taylor, who did the real life, uh, the real shark footage, which was really good. Um, so yeah, great documentary about the making of one of the greatest films ever made, in my opinion. But I think that's the opinion of most people. Like this is as phenomenal of a film as possible and it's great to see just how it was made i like how that's been a feature on multiple formats because sometimes you're like oh something that was like on the dvd doesn't go to the blu-ray or something that was part of the blu-ray when they have the 4k for whatever reason they don't uh, keep it um <clears throat> though the shark is still working i believe that documentary was initially on its own DVD, but then they kind of repurposed that and put it out on, uh, or they, they obviously Universal got the rights to it and have now put it on all the releases of Jaws since the Blu-ray came out in 2012, so. That's a great documentary right there. And another one. Probably my favorite in terms of uh, movie making documentaries in terms of a specific film or franchise. And that is the Empire of Dreams documentary. Uh, which uh, talks about the making of the Star Wars trilogy. The original Star Wars trilogy and how George Lucas and company had to create uh, the effects and the shooting locations and how <clears throat> the sets and everything is like how <clears throat> it was just very difficult for George Lucas to make <laughs> uh, these three films. Not that the prequel trilogy was any wasn't difficult, but you know technology had gotten better, and so his vision for the films was able to be a bit easier. Where Obviously, when making these films, they were more difficult. Of course, there is a, a Mark Hamill and George Lucas on the set of when they were doing the Tatooine scenes in um, Tunisia. <clears throat> Tunisia. And this was only included with the original trilogy set. Uh, in 2004 and unfortunately this documentary has never um, been out on any other format it's not on the blu-ray releases like of a complete saga in 2011 uh, and of course it's not I don't believe it's in the 4k big box set of uh, the nine movies with inclu which includes the three ones made under the ownership of Disney. I don't believe it is. Uh, not that I've heard of, at least, but I could be wrong, but I have I've I have not heard that th that has ever returned or shown up anywhere outside of the DVDs. So if you have the DVDs, you get an amazing documentary. And it goes through the three films, you know, from uh <clears throat> You know, A New Hope, or just Star Wars, as it was called, uh, originally, because, you know, George Lucas wanted it to be numbered, but he was told by Adelaide Jr., uh, head of Fox, that if you call it Episode 4, people will likely be confused and wonder where the first three movies were. Um, or, however, there's d things, discrepancies about how, you know, Empire Strikes Back, which was released in theaters as Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back, and Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, three years later. Um, but there are some things where, uh, like how George Lucas was wondering what episode the Empire Strikes Back should be. Should it be 4, 6, 3, or uh, whatever, or and he decided, no, I believe five have three of these movies. And then there could be a backstory later for three. 
<clears throat> which obviously George Lucas did do, but yeah, the documentaries of the making of Star Wars, I have always found fascinating. I mean, I love these films, obviously, but just seeing how he, he and everybody involved made these movies, seeing some on-set footage that you would might not see many in many other places is quite fascinating. Um, but, you know, great documentary about a trilogy that is very well beloved. Now, these next two are fairly related. The Friday the 13th uh, documentaries. His name was Jason. It's 90, uh, 90 minutes. Fine documentary. Very good, uh, you know, extended uh, interviews with all those who were Jason and other di interviews with the directors and other stuff on uh, the second disc of, you know, four hours of bonus material. This, though... It's like a, you know, like a seven hour documentary and multiple discs. Um, you know, this is a excellent documentary and all, but this is even better. You know, you know, Crystal Lake Memories, the complete history of Friday the 13th. There's a book of that name, which I actually don't have. I really wish I had it, but unfortunately I don't. I probably will get it one day. But I, but, but the book has up to... Um, um, uh, Freddy vs. Jason. You know, the reboot was not yet made. So he had, didn't have anything. The author had nothing for that film yet written and he says he he would love to actually write an addendum to that but you know the copyright and all or the rights to do that are a little iffy because you know Warner Brothers was like yeah we don't have that deal with you you know they got new they own New Line Cinema now um so because of that you know if they want to make a new documentary about the film or that, to include that, or for a chapter, I guess I should say, about that film, <clears throat> you know, the author has to um, pay or something, pay a certain amount of money, or maybe even give them a certain amount of rights and or royalties, if and when that would ever happen. And he thinks it's a complete disappointment because he wants it for physical copy too, not just digital. Where with digital, that's a different thing. But he feels like that would be kind of unfortunate where the physical copy was phenomenally... was Not only is it phenomenal, but it's great. It looks great to, to like have like on your coffee table or on a shelf. And to not be able to have the option of buying a new print or for the first time buying the book with all of the movies he thinks it's a complete shame but if you got the digit if you were to get the digital it would just eventually just you know update and one day and you'll have all of it but yeah but this documentary has all talks about all 12 films so does that one but you know has a a mixture of cast and crew as well as fans of the films and other filmmakers and people who are just enjoy the movies they also in this talk about the tv show which really had nothing to do with the films <clears throat> there was no jason or crystal lake or anything no, there was apparently a rumor where the you know they go around and you know there's a lot of like supernatural stuff that's what the show was really like you know, find artifacts and supernatural stuff and there's like a lot of um uh uh a lot of stuff and apparently the last episode rumored uh, though i think that's been debunked i'm not sure but i think it is where the last item of the entire show was going to be jason's hockey mask and it's cursed so you gotta find it and supernatural stuff with it because Jason keeps coming back. 
And the only thing that that show really has in common outside of the title, <laughs> Friday the 13th, which originally was supposed to be the 13th hour. But they thought if it kept that title, people would never watch it. But if you call it Friday the 13th, you got people's attention and you'll have viewers. But uh, outside of the title, John DeLamay, I believe is his name. Could be wrong. But uh, a guy who's like the main guy in uh, Jason Goes to Hell, the f final Friday, the ninth film in the franchise, he was in the show. And so... That's really the connection. Not the same character, but the same actor was in both the TV show, of Friday, the Friday the 13th series, and a Friday the 13th film. Um, but it's a it's great to hear all the various people who are involved from the behind the scenes and in front of the camera <clears throat> uh, talk of, talking about all these movies and also how, like, you know, Frank May... Cuso Jr., who helped, uh, who was not only like an executive of Paramount, but helped produce parts three through eight, he uh, said that, uh, like how, you know, the, you know, these films made money, but the company overall was not happy with these films. And so, because of that, you know, there were some, you know, it was kind of a, an odd thing. Like, you know, this is the company that made films that are prestigious films and beloved movies like The Godfather 1 and 2 and, like, Ordinary People and stuff like Academy Award winning films. And yet, like, I guess like a flagship series is Friday the 13th. Like, we don't really want to be known for that, but yet at the same time, uh, it makes money. So... Until it stopped making money, <laughs> uh, they kept it and then they sold it off because, you know, can't make money for them anymore. We don't want it. Basically, it was how that went. Um, but I kind of talked about that, I guess, briefly about the... Uh, uh, with part nine and how that went to... They, uh, New Line Cinema made that because they sold off, Paramount sold the franchise and and everything but, uh, that, but the name. The name was theirs, so they couldn't call their films, you know, <clears throat> um, Friday the 13th. That's why they're, like, Jason Goes to Hell, Jason X. But then, Friday, but then, you know, Freddy vs. Jason is just Freddy vs. Jason. You know, just get to the point. <laughs> you don't need Nightmare on Elm Street Part 8, Friday the 13th Part 11. You know. So, yeah. And this is narrated by Corey Feldman. And uh, these next two are... Um... From the Criterion Collection. This one is Crumb. About the. Uh, underground comic book artist. Uh, Robert Crumb. He's a very interesting guy. He. Uh, has some. Really interesting. Uh, <laughs> artwork. That he just you know draw. Not only does he just draw. But just his. Uh, uh, style is very interesting and unique we also get to hear uh, from people who know him like his brothers uh, he has mal a bit and uh, it's a very uh, <clears throat> very well done documentary um this might not appeal to everybody but um i saw a film based off of a comic he made called fritz the cat which was you know like the first X-rated uh, <clears throat> uh, animated film and, uh, you know, it's about this cat that is very sexual and everything and uh, very much of the time of the, uh, you know, came out in 71. Like, late 60s, early 70s was when the, that, that character was very popular. 
And uh, but he wasn't happy with the movie, so we made a comic where he gets killed. <laughs> um, and because of that film, that's what he is best known for. But yeah, he, uh, it's a very interesting uh, look at a guy's life who really is is he's interesting. He's different. Perhaps not in the best of ways to some, but he's definitely an interesting person to look at, I think. And uh, the presentation is very good. And then this is a uh, Hoop Dreams. I really like this documentary. It's an excellent documentary. Should have been up for the Academy Award for Best Documentary, and it wasn't, shamefully. But it's about two uh, boys in Chicago who uh, <clears throat> want to, from freshman year of high school to their freshman year of uh, college. You know, they're playing basketball and they have dreams of making it big. And it's a very good film. It's a very good uh, documentary about these two uh, guys, uh, Arthur Eggie and William Gates. And uh, you see our various um, <clears throat> triumphs and some of their downfalls. But yeah, it's very, very... Uh, it's very good. It's a very good look at, uh, and, uh, and very inspiring, too, I think. Just an excellent movie overall. Got snubbed by the Academy, but, you know, what else is new? <laughs> Happens a lot. And this film, I got this not long after my last update, so couldn't include it then. But um, And this is a film I saw like 15 years ago on the independent film channel, which is now called IFC, and yet they don't have it at all. They say, like, IFC now means nothing. We've changed it to just IFC and stands for nothing, even though I believe they still play independent films, so I don't know what the point was. If it's not going to mean independent film channel anymore, just call it something else. But anyway, the film is American Movie. Say so yeah, about 15 years ago or so, I remember seeing this and I'm pretty sure it was on the Independent Film Channel because that would make a good amount of sense. But it's about Mark Borchardt trying to finish a film, a short film called Coven, or Coven, just depending on your pronunciation of it. But he uh, wants to make a film called Northwestern, but lacking funds, he, feel, he believes, like, I, I got to finish this uh, short film. And if I can sell enough copies of it, you know, enough ticket sales and also enough people buy the VHS, because this takes place in the 90s. Over the course of two years from like 95 to the 97, <clears throat> you know, if he sells enough copies, he'll have enough money to then uh, make his feature film, Northwestern, which he had been making since like at least the 90s. And you can see fragments of it. And uh, this is a very inspiring uh, documentary to watch if one loves movies, loves to make movies, whatever. Both. It's just great to see this guy's passion and uh, how, you know, even when things are really down. And there are some moments that are, are not very happy to see. Um. But he does what he can to get the film made, uh, you know, COVID finished. And we see family members of his, particularly like his Uncle Bill, whom he gets uh, to give him $3,000 to uh, help finish the, uh, the short film. And, uh, you know, he's going to uh, give him his money back, uh, like when there's money being made off of it. Um and then uh, <clears throat> his good friend, Mike Shank, who also pr pr provides the music here. Uh, ever since he was like six or so, he got a guitar. And he's been playing it ever since. He's basically self-taught. Uh, and uh, Mike is one of the greatest guys ever. I mean, Uncle Bill is fantastic, too. 
Mark's a fascinating man himself, but Mike, he's just like, every time he's on screen, you're just like, oh, this is just one of the <laughs> greatest guys ever. And two years ago, unfortunately, he passed away from cancer. Um, but uh, Mike is a great friend. Sticking with uh, Mark from like the from the beginning to the end of the process, and uh, the story of how uh, Chris Smith, the director, got in contact. You know, he was editing a film of his um, at a uh, University of Milwaukee, which is where uh, Mark was editing his movie. And, uh, they met and, yeah, just became, <laughs> uh, you know, the rest is history, as they say. And, um, you know, I may talk about some of these movies here, some of these documentaries, probably like Hoop Dreams, because that's 30 years old. This is 25 years old. Came out in 99. Um... And apparently the DVD of this actually had a the short film of Coven. Um, the Blu-ray doesn't, you know. I'm I'm sure Sony, you know, they could have gotten the rights to it, <laughs> or so, or or whatever, and helped release it uh, with this, but they didn't. Um, and. Uh, I believe there is a 4K version now, which also does not have the uh, short film. So the DVD has it, but yeah, I, I never got the DVD. I saw it when I was a teenager, really loved it. I thought everybody was great at it. You know, it's a very good film <coughs> or documentary, whatever, about what it's like to make an independent film. You know, it is very difficult. It's not easy. <laughs> um, you see some of the trials <laughs> of trying to get certain scenes done, no matter how simple they are or seem to be. Um, you know, sometimes Mark is alone and has to... <clears throat> I can man the camera himself and everything. It's just, just very good. Uh, and uh, I think I'll probably at least talk about this sometime later. See with hoop dreams. Um, oh yeah. So yeah, those were some documentaries I love and enjoy. I believe I actually did talk about the uh, about um, Crystal Lake Memories, and uh, his name was Jason. Yeah, when I did those Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> videos a few years ago i did talk about those but i wanted to kind of highlight them and show how i still enjoy them even now they're just very good and uh if you like those films great insight and all these uh the film-based ones are all great insights as to how these movies were made even if it seemed like Perhaps in some level, maybe some of these weren't all that... Wouldn't look difficult to make, but absolutely were. You know, Jaws shot on the ocean. Spielberg quickly realized why people don't make films in the ocean. If for a good chunk of the movie, it's taking place in the ocean. Because it's unpredictable. Even if you perhaps have one good day where... Nothing bad could ever happen that could. Well, the rest of the days before and after are not going to be pleasant. And plus also the shark kept breaking and everything. And with Star Wars, you know, George Lucas was like, yeah, I didn't get everything shot that I wanted. You know, there was certain deadlines <clears throat> that I had to do. I had to finish the film on, which because the studio forced Alan Ladd Junior to be like, there's an ultimate, you will, that movie will be finished by this day, or else it's not even coming out at all. It doesn't matter if everything is done and looks great, it's just never coming out. And, uh, yeah. But yeah, this one really, really sticks to me. 
you know, rewatching it all these years later, you know, <clears throat> and Mark Borchardt, he, uh, you know, his inspiration comes from uh, films like The Texas Chainsaw Massacre and The Seventh Seal. You know, grew up in the Milwaukee's north side, you know, of a, like of a village of Menominee Falls, Wisconsin. Excellent film. Um, yeah, all these documentaries are great. And uh, I know this was a fairly lengthy video, and hopefully this wasn't boring. Because um, it is different. You know, it's not me talking about one particular film. Or even a franchise where all the films are pretty similar. <laughs> I mean, I guess these are all similar in that they're all documentaries, but of different genres and stuff. So <clears throat> I hope uh, you found this interesting in any way. If not, sorry. I'm sure, you know, next week will be <laughs> a movie where, you know, it's actually you know, about one thing in particular, one specific topic that doesn't go from one thing to another. Um, so yeah, I hope all of you are doing well. Please have a great day, and I hope all of you have a great weekend and a great next week. Bye.